All right, so we've had a little bit of cold start issue with the truck we built here last year, and we finally figured it out. Um, it's one of those things in hindsight when you look at it, it's 2020, and what we're going to have to go into and repair was kind of a decision we made at the time that we would wait for this repair because this is a high performance motor somebody built. Well, today the timing chain is definitely stretched, and what will happen is it will start good cold, but during the warm up phase, the timing will actually uh, retard by 4 degrees and it'll take it till it's warmed up and running on back in advance till it runs i mean it runs good but we've got a stutter and it's been getting bad for the last couple of months and now it's stalling and it's timing jump and with a motor with a cam it just won't fly First things first, always disconnect your battery before you start this job. Um, you will have to move some stuff out of your way to get to your timing chain cover. After you've done your battery, undone your battery, make sure you undo your belts. That's the next thing he's doing here. After he loosens up the alternator, he's going to go and relieve the pressure on the power steering pump. Get your belts out of the way. They have to be out of the way. You can leave the alternator connected if you want to work around it, but sometimes it's just as easy just to take it off the bracket and move it out of your way to give you more working room, which is what we're going to do in this case. There's only two bolts to hold the alternator in. There's one at the block and there's one on top of the alternator bracket. This will vary by year as your alternator bracket. Some are held in by the upper mount in the intake and some are not. We've noticed two different types so far building these trucks. If you notice the ominous sound in the background, well it's winter time in Northwest so we have our wood stove going. So. I do apologize for that noise, but we need it because for gaskets to seal correctly, it needs to be at least 55 degrees. And it's been a little cold this year. Hot summer, now we're going into cold winter. Welcome to La Nina. Alright, on the water pump, there's going to be a bolt. He's going to take that off right now because the water pump does have to come off for this job. Once we get some room opened up, we'll show you the brackets more in depth in front. It's a really good idea to have a metal tray for this job. Right now, remove the outside bolt. You can leave that loose. You want to break them both loose before you remove this. Power steering pump will have to be kicked off to the side. Again, the water pump is the mounting location for the centering location for the 350s on most built models. Oh, wait, that's right. I had to do this. It's been a while since we worked on this. Oh, uh, yeah. We haven't touched this thing since we built it. Can't do anything about a stretch chain. That happens, especially when you put a cam and a motor. We're putting a double roller on. It should last 100,000 miles. This motor's already destroyed one truck. I'll show pictures of one now that this one came out of. I didn't ever show you guys the backside of this truck. <laughs> um, yeah, and once we figured out this motor, we'll run the six grand. Uh, ooh. I think this thing's been driving with a chain that's been stretched. There's more. So make sure that ahead of time you loosen up your fan blade cover. That way you can get better access if you need to. And then you should just be able to pull your fan blade and fan clutch off. And the lock washers will drop. That's why you have cardboard and or you're on concrete. And don't forget, if your truck has a sleeve, 
take the sleeve out. This is a sleeve for the aftermarket uh, fan clutch. Now you should just be able to wiggle it out without damaging the radiator. Or, instead of finagling this, you can just pull it out with the fan blade cover. Be careful not to damage your radiator. So once you get enough access, pull the fan blade and fan clutch out. So that way you don't scratch your radiator. Or dent it. Fighting with these fan shrouds sometimes is definitely interesting. Yeah, it's not like about two pieces. Now we have access, and now we have room to what we need to do, and that's getting to the timing cover. You got an alternator, the lower alternator bracket. Unfortunately, it's going to have to come off this water pump because we're going to be pulling out this water pump today. Now these should be 916 bolts. You should just be able to let the alternator, the lower alternator bracket, kind of just hang there, so that way you don't have to take out your alternator. But if you want more room, take out the alternator and take this bracket with it. Once it gets far out enough, you should just be able to, rot to rotate the bowl out by your hand. And if you don't, you might have a problem. Always have a catch pan underneath. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it drip a little bit so I know as soon as I do this side all of it's going to come out. It doesn't really look like it wants to come off so I'm going to get a plastic hammer and try to smack it a little bit while the bolts are still in. I torqued it. <laughs> Try to hold up the water pump as you do this so that way you don't strip any threads. To avoid antifreeze falling down on the ground, it's a good idea to hold the water pump up as you pull it out. Alright, now look at this. Look at this beautiful access we have. And besides, we can't access the timing cover without taking the water pump off. Now, we're going to take off the bottom crank pulley and the harmonic balancer. Before you do this, it'd probably be a good idea to throw some cardboard in front of your radiator so that way you don't damage your radiator. Alright, so now we're going to take off this bottom pulley. Nope. nope. Fails. Made that socket warm though. Sure did. Holy crap, dude. Who over torqued that? Not me. <laughs> you shouldn't be that over torqued. I don't oh. think I, there's snap locks on them, Kev. What? There's snap locks. Even if you put 35, it takes 65 to take them off. Kevin, hold on to the back of that socket mask. There you go. Yeah, I know, but it's still moving. Lot of motor to fight through. Uh, now I'm using the impact. <laughs> Just gotta get them broke loose, that's all. That was just ridiculous. Oh, that's why it didn't come off. Lock tight. I might have to get my air gun out on that one. Uh. 
I try not to use air tools because they're just very abrasive, but sometimes it's just, it's gotta happen. I'm just hoping I didn't mess up these threads with this crank. Oh. 